So I'm here on the north flank of the Saddle Mountains, uh, lower portion of Smyrna Bench, uh, above the railroad tracks, and south of the Crab Creek Valley. Uh, just taking a look at the uh, sediments in the upper Ringgold Formation, and then um, some of the stuff that overlies the Ringgold. So at the base of the section, we see uh, lacustrine siltstones from one of the last lakes in the Ringgold system, so Pliocene age. Some call that the uh, Savage Island member of the Ringgold Formation. And then on top of that, there's a, a conspicuous uh, soft sediment deformation zone with um, sort of a greenish cast. And you see the folds in this silty, sandy zone that sits uh, above those lake beds or at the top of those lake beds. There's a whitish cemented layer at the base that's also folded that's about 10 centimeters wide. And then above the deformed zone is um, about a meter or meter and a half of uh, prismatically parting, um, silty, muddy paleosol. So at least one soil profile there. And then above that we get into some overbank and then um, probably lust that's overprinted by calcrete. But I wanted to show you uh, these features that are pretty characteristic around this area and I find them in the same stratigraphic position right at the top of the Ringgold formation or right at the top of the lake beds as you transition away from a wetland setting to an upland setting. And you see these cool ascending uh, lobes and then uh, sort of drooping uh, load casts. So classic loading structures but you also get these little <clears throat> little dikes and uh, little squirts here and there. So where I find these, uh, they always have this sort of greenish and orangish cast, and they are commonly associated with a paleosol above and lake beds below.